Hey YouTube, this is Rob L. In my last video, I did a quick unboxing of the XFX3, which I purchased about three weeks ago. I've been using it for direct recording and for demos, but the other way I've been using it lately is through a power amp that I also purchased into a 212 cabinet. So I want to show you that setup really quick and then give you some tips and pointers about how to make it sound better because going direct into Pro Tools and then going into a 212 cabinet is a different animal altogether. And there are some adjustments that you can make to make it sound much better through a cabinet. Okay, to start off, the first thing you can see here is that my instrument cable is going into the input of the NS2, and then the output on the left side there is going to go out to the XFX. Okay, one other thing you'll notice here is that I have a wire going from the send of the NS2 noise suppressor into the input of my Boss G2100, and that's essentially so I can just use it as a tuner if I want to. Okay, so as you can see here, the XFX has an input not only in the front, but also on the back of the unit, and that's where I'm going into. Okay, so the next thing here is you'll see that I have an XLR cable going from the output one of the back of the XFX. Okay, and this is a Crown XLS1002 power amp. That XLR cable is going into the input of the Crown power amp in the back. Okay, so in this particular case, this Crown, you must use a speed con adapter. So I have an amplifier cable going into a speed con adapter going into the input jack in the back of the cabinet. Oh, and by the way, this is a 212 empty cabinet from Seismic Audio. I put in two warehouse speaker Veteran 30 speakers, both 16 ohms, which makes an 8 ohm load altogether, wired in parallel. Okay, so if you're not going to be going through full range PA speakers, you probably want to turn the cabinet simulations off in the Axe 3. And the way you do that is you want to hit Setup, Global Settings, and Enter. And then, as you can see, I already have it bypassed, but you want to make sure that cabinet modeling says bypassed. And above that, it says power amp modeling. You probably want to keep that on, although you can experiment and see what works for you. And then you simply hit exit, exit, back to your patch. Okay, so one of the things I noticed that when I tried this type of setup going through a power amp into the T12 was that it, compared to direct recording, it was extremely dark and it sounded like there was a blanket thrown over the cabinet. And I went onto the forum and I got some advice and here's what I've learned. So the first thing you might want to do is go over here under amp and go to where it says speaker drive. I already have it on there. And then where it says speaker compression, make that zero. So let's say it's on three, you simply want to turn it to zero. Okay, that's the first thing you want to do. The next thing you might want to do is throw in a, an EQ here after the cabinet. Now the cabinet's off. The cabinet block is there, but it's off obviously. And what you may want to do is throw in uh, an EQ block here. And if you can see the way I have it generally EQ'd, I have the highs much higher, and I have the lows in this particular case um, because it's, I believe it's a, uh, a Marshall 1987X. I have those higher too, but that, it's all according to taste. But generally speaking, if you could turn all these up, it actually takes the blanket, so to speak, off of the cabinet, and it sounds the way you expect it to sound. Okay guys, that's it. Just a quick video showing some tips that I've learned with regards to the Axe FX3 over the past few weeks. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And I'll be back soon with a lot more content, especially regarding the Axe FX3. It's an amazing unit, and I will be coming back with a full review. See you soon. I will...